Hello, the Darkness 344 here. In this video, I'll show a basic example of encryption and decryption in Minecraft using the Vernam cipher. As usual, the world download will be in the description, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. First of all, what is encryption and decryption? Well, encryption is the process by which data is converted to an unreadable form. This is to keep data secret from anyone who should not have access. Decryption is basically the opposite of encryption, so we take the encrypted data and we restore it to our original data. In this video, I'll talk about the Vernam cipher, which is a symmetric cipher where a character, or bit in our example's case, is encrypted with its own individual key. But what's a key? It's just a second input that determines the output of our encryption algorithm. Symmetric encryption algorithms, like the example I'm going to show, require the key to be shared between the sender and receiver, as it's required to decrypt the data that was sent. There are also asymmetric algorithms, which can use mathematically linked keys which do not need to be shared, but these algorithms are typically a lot more complex and, well, definitely not feasible for Minecraft. I'm sure someone out there will make one eventually, but um, I'll leave it to someone else. So now let's actually get onto the video and show what I've um, created. So over here we have our um, encryptor module, I guess, and we have our decryption device over here as well. And um, linking the two devices together, we're just using this one line, um, of course, using serial. Of course, this device is for the Vernam cipher, but how does the Vernam cipher actually work? So as in the intro kind of stated, you do actually need a key. And the way the Vernam cipher will work is we have our data and a key, which has to be the exact same length as our data. Then what we do is we exclusive or the two inputs together. So we're going to exclusive or our key with our input. And this will produce our data, which is just stored over here. I think some people call it like the cipher text or whatever, but um, I'll just refer it to as encrypted data for now. Then over here, all of this is basically just a serial module. Um, I've just built a vertical one. It was fairly simple design. And what it does is it sends the data at one bit per tick um, down this line over here into um, our decoder, well, redstone tick, not, not game tick, um, which is this over here. So some shift registers and the logic for that. And this gets put into another set of um, exclusive OR gates where to decrypt whatever data that goes into it, we also have to input the first, uh, well, the original key. So say we had um, a key of two, and we'd also need to input the key of two for uh, to decrypt our data. So why does this work? Well, because we are exclusive ORing um, a number with a, a key, and then we exclusive um, OR that same, uh, the, the result from that, the encrypted data, with the key again, we're just getting our input back again. We can go through a demonstration in a minute, but it's it, it just works very well. And it's a great way to encrypt data very, very um, simply because you only need um, one logic gate. So let's actually give this a test. So let's just put in a random number. So if we put in 1100 uh, 1010 for our um, input, for instance, as we can see, we kind of have it over here. And then if we uh, pick a random key, so I'm going to use 1010 uh, 1011 maybe. And then what we can do is, well, we now have our encrypted data stored over here. We can basically send it serially down this line over to our decryption device. And as you can see, it comes in. And well, we cannot tell what the input or the key is just from this data over here. This data to any um, attacker or anyone who um, has intercepted our transmitted data um, is useless because they don't know what it means or and it's impossible to decrypt without the key. So what happens if you did have the key? Well, if we put the key in, which was um, 1010, um, I think it was 1011, let's just check, yep it was. Then we have our output um, over here. And this is basically XORing that um, the encrypted data with the key and we get 11001010, which is um, what we put in. So this works quite well, it's a very simple device. And even if you were able to um, intercept that encrypted data, you wouldn't be able to do anything with it because you need the key. So for instance, let's just hook it up to this random um, serial um, decoder over here. 
So let's just run a line like this. So I just hooked it up to that device over there. And if we transmit the data again, so if we just press send, as you can see, we have um, our data coming in and pretend this was like some um, attacker device and we are trying to steal the information from um, whoever was sending the messages across. Um, they have this data, which is, well, useless to them because they don't have the key. And if, we, if they did have the key, they'd be able to exclusive or it with that data and they'd be able to get the proper output. So this device um, that will be in the world download is also 8 bits, which is perfect for um, transmitting individual letters across. So say you had a bunch of like ASCII, so say you had some like um, ASCII string, for instance, you could transmit it across. Um, you just need a bunch of shift registers on each side. So if you transmit one letter across each time, and you could even have a different key for each different letter, uh, make it a bit more complex. Then you get the output over here and you just plug this output straight into a bunch of shift registers. So each time you get an input, you just shift it across one. Um, this is quite a good way of sending um, text over one wire and having it encrypted. Not that I really know what you'd kind of use this for because you could always just use a messaging service for instance in real life. So just for a, a more built up version of what a device like that could look like, um, I built this device around a year ago. I think it's on my 1000 subscriber special video and I never completed it though so um, I guess you can check it out if you want. But what we basically have over here is a QWERTY keyboard and so we can just input whatever characters and it gives um, it will input it in ASCII, I think it's only 7 bit though. Um, you can also um, input custom characters over here on the side, but this basically goes through a bunch of shift registers. Um, you can choose between the um, if it's going to be the text or if it's going to be the key. So it goes into whichever shift register, so the text one or the key. And these basically get uh, exclusive forward together with these XOR gates and put into registers. Um, you can then read that off into these, into this text display and you can encrypt and decrypt and stuff. Um, and it uses this ASCII lookup table over here. But I never did finish this, so um, you can check it out if you want, but um, hopefully this inspires you to do something with this. But yeah, the purpose of this device was basically just to, um, you can put data in, encrypt it, and it'll show the encrypted message on here but you can also decrypt that data and it would show the decrypted message on this display. Uh, this probably wasn't the best way of doing of wiring things up. Um, I'm sure there are much nicer ways of doing it as I was describing earlier with some shift registers. So now let's actually just run through this example again just to show um, how the cipher actually restores the data from the key. We're just going to work on one bit um, because I think it'll just be a bit easier to understand. So let's just run through a few basic examples. So for instance, if um, this is just for one bit, but just imagine a bunch of these in parallel. So say we had um, our text as a zero and we have a one as our key and say this is just for bit zero or bit seven or whatever. If we XOR these together, um, one exclusive for zero is just going to be one. And this will be our encoded text. But then if you remember to decode it, we can just XOR it back with our key. So if we have one exclusive or one, it's just going to be zero. So that's how we can restore um, our text from it. But for instance, let's just try something else. So instead of doing a zero, we can do a one. So if we had a one here, this would then be a zero. So because one exclusive or one is just a zero. And then of course, one exclusive or a zero is a one. So we get um, our data back out again. Then of course the key can always be a zero as well, but I'm not going to run through any more examples because I'm sure you can kind of understand how it works now. But yeah, this was just a very simple video, hopefully um, teaching you a bit about at least the Venam cipher and hopefully will inspire some people to make a few more different types of ciphers um, in Minecraft and actually come up with a slightly better use than I've just um, demonstrated over here. But yeah, hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and I'm out.